hauling, we're hauling, we're hauling away. Fighting the wind and the cold on the bay. Our fathers, grandfathers were fishermen too. This cold, rocky coast makes a man out of you. It's winter in the Gulf of Maine. The air is bitter cold and the seas are rough. But that doesn't stop the skippers of Maine shrimp boats from heading out to sea and casting their nets for this small but tasty and highly prized cold water delicacy. Among the fleet is this small one-man dragger fishing near Monhegan Island. This fisherman can operate his boat and haul his net at the same time from a small platform at the after deck. One slip could plunge him into that frigid water where death lies moments away. These are typical winter conditions, fighting a strong wind and rough sea. Here he's hauling back his net. Its catch has attracted a swarm of hungry seabirds, which somehow survive these harsh conditions with the help of food they steal from the fishing boats. The species of shrimp fished off Maine is called Pantelus borealis, the northern shrimp. Its distribution ranges from the Bering Sea on the coast of Alaska, Greenland, Iceland, Norway, Sweden, and as far south in Europe as northern England. In North America, it reaches its southern limit in the Gulf of Maine. Another small dragger with a two-man crew here is hauling back its net. Shrimp fishing in Maine began as a commercial enterprise in 1939. Shrimp landings after World War II approached 800,000 pounds, but then declined gradually until 1954, when no shrimp were landed on the Maine coast. Landings picked up in 1959 and increased to new records each year since 1961. Recent yearly landings have topped 10 million pounds. So drag him and that boy, drag him and slow. No rips or tears, then stow him below. It's back-breaking work when you run a good run. And plenty of shrimp when the working is done. This catch is probably about a thousand pounds of shrimp caught during a two-hour tow of the net. The catch is dumped onto the deck where it is sorted out. Trash fish are thrown over the side. Edible fish, such as codfish and flounder, are put to one side, while the shrimp are dumped directly into the hold. The net, as it comes over the rail, is checked for tears or rips, which may occur during the two-hour drag over the bottom. From Kittery, Rockport, Monhegan Round. Just one night out, boys, and head her to town. There's brandy, a fire, a good wife at home. They'll warm a man's heart when he's chilled to the bone. During long periods of sub-zero cold, ice locks in the harbors. Then it's necessary to come in and break it up. With the ice broken, this fishing boat plows through to the unloading dock. Evidence of the rugged winter fishing conditions is this ice which covers decks and gear and makes fishing difficult and dangerous. At the wharf, shrimp are hauled from the hold and dumped into containers 
for transportation to the processing plant. Some plants are located right at wharf side to ensure freshness of the processed shrimp. Processing of the shrimp takes a variety of forms. These whole shrimp are being sorted and grated and have been cooked in a special solution containing a red dye. Proof that they are fresh is the tight curl of the tail, which occurs only if shrimp are cooked within three hours after catching. The shrimp are packed in these containers for transportation to Canada and thence by air to Sweden where this type of shrimp pack is highly favored. Several million pounds of Maine shrimp are thus shipped annually. A large percentage of Maine shrimp are peeled by machines such as these, which leave only the tail meat. Bits of shell are removed as they ride a conveyor belt past these women. While some Maine shrimp are cooked and canned, most are quick frozen. When the IQF or individually quick frozen shrimp emerge, they are given an attractive glaze with a fine spray of water. The shrimp are packed in a variety of containers depending upon their ultimate use. Here a small nine ounce package is prepared for domestic consumption. At its research station at Booth Bay Harbor, the main department of sea and shore fisheries carries out a program studying the biology, distribution, and abundance of the northern shrimp. Here, a vessel chartered for the shrimp research program, the Dragon Lady, leaves the dock outward bound on a research and exploratory cruise. Dragon lady is showing her yield. No time to mope, boy, though no time for tears. There's plenty of shrimp if we hit it just right. We'll catch them today and we'll sell them tonight. The Gulf of Maine, extending from Cape Ann along the Maine shore to the western Nova Scotian shore and south to George's Bank, contains a large commercial population of shrimp. Red circles on the chart indicate areas explored by the department. From Kittery Rockport, Monhegan Round. Just one night out, boys, and head her to town. There's brandy a fire, a good wife at home. They'll warm a man's heart when he's chilled to the bone.
En route to the sampling area, nets and gear are inspected and readied for fishing. The Dragon Lady carries several research nets of special design. The shrimp nets used are the so-called semi-balloon nets developed in the southern shrimp fishing industry. The net consists of lightweight, fine thread and small doors. The net is fished from a 150-foot long bridle, which is secured to a single wire operating from a single drum winch. Towline length is generally three times the depth of the water. All tows are one half hour in length. It's back-breaking work. When you run a good run And mighty good living when the working is done Catches with the research net vary from about 40 to 150 pounds of shrimp, depending upon when and where the tow is made. The net is lined with a fine mesh liner in the cod end to retain the smaller size shrimp as well as those of commercial size. The tows also bring up flatfish, groundfish, and trash such as are usually caught in the commercial drags. The quantities of shrimp caught give a rough estimation of the abundance of shrimp in various areas. In the spring, larval shrimp, those shrimp newly born which live in the mid-depths of the water, swarm along the coast. Here, a plankton net is rigged up and dragged to catch these larvae for study. The net is one meter in diameter and has a mesh of approximately one millimeter. As the net is recovered, it is washed down with buckets of seawater in order to ensure that all specimens, plankton, shrimp larvae, fish eggs, and other small animals are washed down into the collecting bucket. Plankton net collections include not only shrimp larvae, but also various kinds of microscopic marine organisms such as arrow worms, copepods, jellyfish, small shellfish, and fish eggs. This second stage shrimp lava is approximately six millimeters long. There are six stages of larval development before a shrimp leaves the planktonic life and settles to the bottom. A bathythermograph is used to measure the vertical temperature distribution in the water column. The BT contains temperature and pressure depth sensitive elements, which together provide information on temperature stratification. Temperature appears to affect the abundance and distribution of main shrimp. A magnifying glass is used to read the information on a glass slide in the BT, and results are recorded in the logbook. At the laboratory, between 300 and 400 shrimp from each sample are examined. Principal points of interest are the shrimp's general condition, size, sex, stomach contents, and parasites. A shrimp is measured in much the same way as is the lobster, along the carapace or back shell, 
with special micrometer calipers. The sex of the shrimp is determined by examining the shape of the first and second swimming legs. On the left is the characteristic male shape, and on the right is the female. It's interesting to note that the shrimp spends the first three years of its life as a male and then becomes an egg-bearing female. The binocular microscope is used to study the shrimp. Another project at the lab is an attempt to raise shrimp in temperature controlled tanks in order to study their reactions. Each tank has a preset temperature within the range which shrimp normally live. Filtered in cool seawater is brought into a heat exchange unit which raises it to the approximate temperature for each tank which is controlled by a thermostat. Each shrimp is raised in its own individual container. And while scientists study the shrimp at sea and in the laboratory, hardy Maine fishermen continue to brave freezing cold and rough seas to bring us the delicate flavored shrimp from the cold waters of the Gulf of Maine. We're hauling, we're hauling, we're hauling away. Fighting the wind and the cold on the bay. Our fathers, grandfathers were fishermen too. This cold rocky coast makes a man. 